So when was the last commit on that October 4th, 2019? That's going to be interesting. Uh, it's not too old, but it's not recent either. Uh, cool, we can already open the docs. Um, yeah, and that's linking to NBUR. Okay, perfect. All right. Twenty nine. I'm not sure how punctual I should be on the starting time. Um, so <coughs> the plan is basically so these jump tutorials have been um, set up to showcase how to. Uh, how to use jump so it's more the user side than extensions or developer side of jump and they, they have been a bit out of date compared to the motions of jump so the first goal will be the first naive goal will be get the tutorials up to date with the latest jump versions so they are now up to date for jump 019 and we want them want to bump them to jump 021 so one thing we should do for that is probably first update to jump 020, see if something's break, and then 21 afterwards. Uh, so that, that will be a first goal, and the second one will be can we, um, can we improve the workflow of how these tutorials work. So uh, for now we will see, you have a few things that are a bit annoying here, how we need to use them and so on. And that would be better to first have these tutorials not depend on the notebooks themselves. And an ideal thing would be, can we use the tutorials as tests to validate some changes in Jump itself? Uh, yes, the tutorials are already generated, but they're committed also. So it's a bit odd. Um, one thing we could do is um, so there's a GH for GitHub pages uh, for documentation, and we could have a notebook page, uh, notebook branch that contains the, not the notebooks to avoid having them in on master. But uh, the tutorials themselves are already generated from um, from Weave, yes. So yeah, I guess we can get started. Thirty one. All right. Um, so I'll yeah, clone this and fork it at the same time on my account and yes no, I have it already open there perfect uh, alright, join tutorials and then uh, Remote at fork, and that's going to be jump tutorials. Oops. Dot gl. Dot git. All right. So that was the basic setup. Uh, one good question is what editor am I going to use? So first, what do we have here? We have docs, notebooks, um, yeah, I'm just going to, is this big enough? Yeah, I'm just going to reason a bit. So we have docs, notebook, uh, script, source, and test. Uh, what does... Yeah, once, maybe twice, like that. Uh, so what's in notebooks? All right, lots of things. So in the notebooks, we have introduction, modeling, optimization concept, using jump. So I guess this is, okay, so we have inside the data uh, in various formats, the notebooks themselves, and some pictures that go with the notebook, I guess. Uh, what does this depend on project? This depends on okay, CSV, some solvers, uh, 
solvers again, light graphs, nice. Weave, like we mentioned, so this is to generate um, to generate some notebooks or other things from um, Julius source files, especially formatted Julius source files themselves. Compat is only Julia 1, that's fairly surprising that it's not blocking on anything, it should maybe commit to, to some versions. Uh, one weird thing that's here is that they commit the manifest itself, which means it's actually working with frozen versions. So if I, oops, nope, I didn't want to do that. Ah, nope. Um, Sorry, close the window by a mistake. Um, so yeah, they do commit the manifest, which is something odd, which means that if we launch the, pro the Julia project now, uh, this is ex this will reuse exactly the same versions as, well as what we have here. And the weird thing is that we don't have any compat, so if we up something, it means we destroy the last version and we don't keep any breaking change or anything. All right. Uh, so where to start? It's a good question. Uh, what do we have in script? Script, okay, script seems to be the actual tutorials with uh, introduction links, so the same thing as we had in the notebooks, um, but as as Julia files with uh, corresponding data and so on. All right, what's in source then? We just have this jump tutorials. Let's check what's inside. Nope, that's source jump tutorials. Yes, I'm gonna be a bit clumsy on um, uh, on my keyboard because I recently changed to a US query layout, so I'm still mistyping a lot of things. All right. Uh, so first thing is this could be a constant, I think. So repo directory is a current directory, but one step higher. All oh right, the bottom is. Yeah, I might have to. Can I change? Yes, I can definitely change that. I think the bottom is cut, so let's. Uh, can I? Yes, like that. All right, you should have my full screen now, but it means it's it might be a bit smaller. So I'll try to yeah keep it zoomed as much as I can without cutting off too much on the right. Um, so repo directory is okay. The repo directory. Duh. This is a constant. We might as we might say this directly. We file all right. Uh, this could be so. I'll just go through some basic maintenance, let's say, and um, and just do some very minor things. It just helps me get a grasp of what's going on in the repo um, and proactively just improve some very minor and significant things at the same time. So weave, weave file is basically calling all the weave stuff, so getting a file name, the path, uh, checking if we need to update something or not, and then produce so notebook is a function from Weave that's gonna produce this um, the notebook out of the Julia source side. All right, uh, Weave file is gonna do. Okay, we file is gonna just call the weave file on top. Okay, we file on the folder is gonna weave the whole folder, so transform the whole folder of uh, scripts into um, the into the corresponding uh, notebooks and so on. Sorry, yeah, I'm gonna do the same here. We're just replacing this with a tab. All right. That's very insignificant changes, but as I said, this is just helping me grasp what's going on here and what we're doing. Uh, we file F, 
so this dash f is for force, I guess. Use which to go irrespective of what, yeah, so irrespective of whether it's been modified or not. So I assume it's like a force option on it instead of calling in with file. Um, with folder with dash f again, so the same thing. And with all f, so force to with well, all the folders. Okay, so it's not it's not actually doing anything in this in the source of the repo. It's just describing what we can do, including so produce the the notebooks for a given folder for a given file and force it or not. All right. So I guess the big part of what's going on may, might be in the documentation itself. Uh, documenter, okay. Okay, using jump documenter jump tutorials. Um, all right, so this is not telling it to do anything. So where is the the big question is where is the magic happening? Uh, would, is it in Travis? No, the docs is just producing the docs. Uh, so I guess that's why the notebooks might be committed. It might be because the um, this is not doing anything, quote, except just producing the docs, which is. Um, which is not uh, so I don't see any command actually calling produce all the notebooks from my repo so this means this is done manually and committed and then the notebooks are extracted and taken into the documentation that's my uh, impression okay no, the, so this is the, the sources for the documentation here and future uh, yes the so the goal for CI is to build the is to build the notebook as uh, a question and yes this will be ideal I think this will be the best thing for the CI to build the notebooks and so you don't have them committed because notebooks have a lot of metadata uh, if we if we open one with a text editor, it's it's pretty awful to see because it has so much, so much, so many things. It's actually one huge block. Yes, uh, the, the package, the, the setup could definitely be a package and it means the jump tutorials will just be a repo of actual tutorials, like just the scripts testing things and nothing else. Uh, yes, so as you see, this is a huge amount of text so to um, to commit that is pretty awful because you get huge diffs all the time uh, one thing I might do is just launch uh, Jupyter lab or Jupyter notebook on the side in the notebook folder uh, did I change something significant yes I have a minor maintenance here um, so Let's see yeah, Jupyter Lab here. And did it open it in the good window? Yes, perfect. So Jupyter for those who don't know it is uh, at this point it's an IDE, a programming in a developing interface that's uh, based around notebooks, which is an interactive um, document mixing code and Julia one Oh, I don't have... Do I have that? Will this work? I'm not sure. So a notebook is mixing uh, code and and text and graphs, uh, pictures and so on, and LaTeX formulas. So uh, the advantage that you can produce some very good quality documents like this where you... It's really great to see code living in an interactive environment. Um, and it's done without too many efforts because you just develop some cells and execute them one by one. So does this actually work here? Um, yes, perfect, this works. And yeah, I 
Definitely agree. It's great for presentation. It's great for interactive work, I find. Uh, there's a bit of controversy around notebooks. Some, of some people don't like it for some reason, uh, which I find legit because it, it can be dangerous uh, because you're messing around with some state that's a bit hidden and you can end up with, wait, did I define this variable? What happens if I restart the notebook? Uh, is it still there? And so on. So, um, yeah, that's why. So, long story short, it's a great format for presenting for tutorials. It's really ideal, uh, but I wouldn't recommend it massively uh, for uh, for development. Does that IDE have the Rise presentation plugin? Yes, it does. Uh, it's I'm actually one of my biggest uses use cases of notebooks these days is uh, producing slides that contain code and math and so on. And that, that's uh, the biggest tool I'm using, and it's fairly handy. So yeah, we well maybe not going to do that now, but you can basically produce slides at any point. So, for example, start a slide at introduction or start a slide at, uh, at the printed and hello world and so on. Uh, so what I did here is launch the notebook. So we have all of them there. And this is, um, so this is another one. All right. Uh, so this one is manually installing gem. That's fairly curious. This should maybe not be there. Plus we see the, the desktop of a former user. Um, so a complete example. Okay, so these notebooks are basically walkthrough for um, for jump. So how to get started with this? And this is the, let's say the basic one. This one is introduction to Julia with basic types, uh, numbers, and so on. This is getting started with jump. So I'm not sure this is actually needed. This block. Um, and and yeah, it's basically solving the model and so on. So first I'll just, uh, did you install Jupyter via Conda? Um, no, I, how did I install Jupyter? I think I installed it via, uh, uh, via pip. Um, that's, so Ju for Jupyter Lab I installed it like this. In Julia for some projects I do have Jupyter installed as, um, uh, as a self-contained project, so you can actually install. Uh, if I start a new project, wait, um, my test. So I'm starting a new test. If I activate a new environment, I can add iJulia, and this will uh, completely install uh, a Jupyter notebook via Conda. This time, you're right. But if you install it globally, it doesn't need to use Conda. All right. So uh, getting started with Jump. So that's the first repo. And so it's basically testing some things and showing the value, explaining how, how basically optimization models work. Um, yes. And I think now, uh, one thing I'm wondering is, so I will try not to save that. Uh, so this is working. Oops. This is working. Just to test to see if my environment is correct and so on. Uh, I wanted to see if this is now using uh, status. If this is now using the global environment or if this is using my uh, self-contained environment of the Jump Tutorials project. Yes, okay, perfect. This is using jump to doors. That's great. Fantastic. So I'm not going to save that. Yes. Related question. Is jump a place to build uh, bindings for fully fledged ST SMT solvers? I don't know what SMT solvers are. Uh, neither do I know what Z3 is. Uh, it might be the case. If you, if you detail what uh, an SMT solver is, it might be but I'm not sure. All right. Um, so in the meantime, so here, one great thing is, uh, so we're using the our self-contained environment, so that's great. Uh, one thing I might do is install, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that globally. I'm gonna add iGuia 
to get um, to get IGDA working oops on uh, to get yeah um, Jupiter working with Julia 1.4 because I just have 1.3 now ah okay set solvers but more general um, I'd say if yeah I'm not sure because I think for set solvers you need uh, the specification you want to give is not really based on constraints in the same sense as constraint in optimization problems so in the end I'm not sure jump will be the best interface jump is before anything an interface for specifying optimization problems and models so you will not um, so I don't think it would be the perfect environment for this kind of, pro of uh, sad problems that have fairly standard and different forms all right so uh, getting back to my environment I just opened a new window here all right um, and get back to this environment so here with one thing we'll see is that I didn't change all these things uh, but it still got modified why because notebooks basically modify themselves every time you open and run them if you change the the G version it will change something I think some dates are uh, the date of when a cell was run is somewhere in the notebook so that's why it's basically continuously modified and you don't want that uh, so one thing I'll do is yeah first remove uh, introduction this is basically a cache folder that I don't want so I'll just remove it uh, I'll create a new working branch uh, what would be this one um, minor format Get check out minor format and here I just um, SRC no um, and that would be uh, minor formatting and improvement all right let me push that fork so fork is my fork my fork remote of the repo and from that so the only things modified now are the notebooks and I don't want that modified for now so just reset everything to say I because I don't want to modify them as of now I'll modify them later for sure but not me it would be they have to be generated and then committed not modified manually these these are really um, generated files for me at least so I'll start a new branch from this one because um, well you don't mm, I don't want to be modifying the same thing all over again here <coughs> sorry um, so branch uh, what would that one be um, jump 020 all right and in this one we'll bump jump from 019 to 020 because I think for now if we look at the manifest yeah jump here you see so we see the version that's used by the project and so we'll bump that to 020 and then test everything everything should work without warning or anything right so for that so I use Julia P which is a shorthand I define for Julia dash dash project and I just add jump at 0 20 um, might be version 0 that 20 should that work 
I guess it should. So it's checking all the packages, everything it needs to bump. I hope it's not gonna up everything that I don't want to modify and just focus on jump itself. Yeah, I think it increased everything. So one thing we should really do is first um, freeze a weave version that we haven't done for now because uh, if we've creates a new breaking change then we might have some some code breaking. Alright. Uh, so how bad is the diff on the manifest? This file is oh that that was not there before interesting. Uh, so it's basically modifying everything it can, yeah. Hmm. It's quite some changes, some of them breaking, but I don't think we have much of a choice. All right. Um, so, oh, what's the diff on the project? Interesting. I knew that there would be a a diff on the manifest itself because that was committing and freezing all the versions. But the project toml, I wouldn't. Oh no, okay, it's just line ending. So I just ignore that for now. Uh, so I just commit that. Uh, weirdly enough, yes, I will commit these two files now. Just to say I did this commit and this is now over. And we'll see now if it breaks or not and fix the things one by one. Uh, so yeah, I'll add the two and. Uh, you can just set jump to 020 in the project toml, delete the entry in the manifest and do package result. Oh, that's that's neat. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I might do that then because I think this, this might be a bit too noisy what I just did. Uh, all right. So jump. Yes, and that would be oops, zero twenty, and that's it. And I think we will also freeze weave to I think it was zero. Um, what was the version of weave? How come it's not there? Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. 0 0.9, okay, so we'll freeze weave to 0 0.9. Alright. And then you said, let's, let's remove that. So let's remove jump from here. And I guess we'll also remove weave. That will make sense. Uh, like usual, I guess I will just keep opening way too many windows. I'll try to restrain myself here. So let's resolve that. Whoops. Color types. Okay. Huh. Uh, why? Instant sheet first. Jump is direct dependency but doesn't appear in the manifest. Resolve. Colors are not huh. Okay. Well that didn't go out as expected, sadly. Alright, let's just reset again and then redo it with add. Sorry about that delay. Um, in the meantime, so yeah, I guess I'll keep the, Jum the Jupyter server here, not touch it. Um, that I don't need. All right, so I upped everything. What's the status now? We've um, jump. Okay. 
So again, I will just uh, I add the compact now. So twenty and weave is uh, zero dot nine. All right. So that will keep us safe, and this is this will be modified soon after. But this uh, helps us say, okay, our package is still working by bumping to uh, germ zero uh, twenty from nineteen. Um, so I guess the thing to do now is just import germ tutorials. We pre-compile the few functions we have. It's not too many, and from that we'll be able to generate O. Eval in close module markdown. Markdown. Okay. Incremental compilations. Markdown. I'll take. Oh, weave is overwriting a method from Markdown. That's interesting. Um, huh. Well, it doesn't seem to be in our package, so we won't worry too much about that for now. Uh, so jump tutorials, and then we have the different functions. And what we wanted is weave all. Well, which will which will actually generate the whole thing. Uh, what we can do, though, is maybe try to include the scripts directly. Let's let's see one of them. The introduction. An introduction to Julia. Okay. Yeah, is this one doing anything at all? Not really. There's not test or anything. Nope. Alright. Then maybe a more advanced like uh, getting started with jump. And we're showing values but interesting. We should maybe be testing the values and showing them at the same time. Uh, but I think the the jump tutorial was saying something about that. Yes. Um, notes. No, adding a new tutorial. Add test. Um, add the file generation inside the test folder to the run test. Okay, oh. so this is interesting. So we are not only generating uh, notebooks, we're also generating test files every time we have, um, we are running the weave file thing. So this means we should be able now to run include. So include, so it's in the test files directly, yes, introduction, and introduction to Julia. And we'll see afterwards what this file does. Okay, it's just printing some stuff. Introduction, introduction to Julia. It's not testing much, mostly printing things like the initial, like the initial notebook. Uh, so if we go there. There are actually some tests running. Nope. And here. Ah, yeah. Okay. So there are some tests, for example, in run test itself. Okay. 
Mm. So there's, there are tests apparently mostly for the introduction, but not for the rest of it. One thing we can do is see if the tests are running, the basic tests we have for now. And running without any warning or anything. Oh no. Add test. Okay. Uh, we don't have test inside the test. That's that's a bummer. It's even weird. Uh, wait. Let me get that here. How come test is an extra test? And um, ah, all right. Extras, and then I always forget how to add tests. Uh, so I just grab it from another project. Um, CD. Oh, sorry, wrong window. I'll keep it there. So what do I have? Uh, convex hull project. Targets, right. I always, always systematically forget that. Uh, targets, test, and then we have just test. Uh, I know there's a new way of doing this, I just don't uh, use it that much. But yeah, basically you say we need extra things for this package when we're not running it normally. And these extras, this extra test is used only in the case when we're doing the task of testing the package. Alright, let's test now, this should work. All right. Hello world sounds good. Nope, no random. Okay, well that's an easy fix. I guess this was done maybe with uh, uh, with Julia 07 or anything when because before it was not needed to specify that you required some uh, standard library packages. Now you do. Uh, so you basically need to add tests. To add random, sorry. So now we added random. Let's relaunch this. So I promise we're soon gonna start with true stuff, I hope. Not getting bogged down too long in maintenance. the file that's being run when you call test introduction oh right and then this is including the uh, the files um. so we stop that introduction more or less? This is freezing for quite a long time. Alright, it's now solving the problem. I don't know how big the problem is and also I think my laptop might be struggling because we're pushing it a bit uh, because of the uh, streaming service on the side plus uh, Jupyter opened and so on. Yeah, I might actually close Jupyter for now. Alright. So it now solved the problem of the second one. It should maybe specify which test set is being run, but well, it's not too bad. Um, so it's now running the using jump one. Yeah, yeah. ah, perfect. Introduction is pretty printing. That's in. I don't know why it's printing the enum. This should probably not do that. Um, yeah, and we'll try to find where it is actually doing this. Is it showing the enum or something? Uh, and where 
is it doing that? It's, it's before the end of the introduction, so it might be there. Include introduction, solvers, and solution. Yeah, probably. Introduction, nope, uh, test, introduction, solvers, and solutions. Is it here? So I'm trying to find where exactly it is using some at show or anything on a model because we, we don't want the test to be that verbose. Display type of MOI feasible point. No, we definitely don't need that. Um, but we should not modify the test files because according to the documentation, if you remember here, uh, this is also generated through Weave. Uh, is the browser big enough, I wonder? Maybe I should zoom a bit also. Uh, so this is saying here that any of the test file is generated using Weave, so we should not modify them by hand because they're going to get uh, rewritten anyways. Instead, we should be uh, modifying the source the, uh, the source script, which is here, introduction. So, and that was there. So that's the whole explanation, what is optimization and so on. And, ah, right, okay. I think we need that, so we need this verbose printing because this is not only for the test, this is also for the notebooks themselves and it might add value in the notebook to see what are the different uh, MY status, statuses and so on. Okay, you can view the different termination status uh, below by referring to the docs for checking possible types. Okay, I see now. Uh, so that's why we have this verbose thing in the test. All right. So how the test doing? Oh, one error. Interesting. Ah, okay. Same thing. So exactly the same as random. We need statistics, and it's not being added. Um, before going any further, I'm also going to add linear algebra, which is also in the standard library and will very likely be needed at some point. So we're doing applied math. I assume algebra might be useful. So before we're running my test, I'm just going to add these two to the to the project. It, they should have been there from the beginning, I think. All right. So that's going to get rerun. So the tests, if I understand the doc correctly, are basically a, a variant of the initial script without all the comments and with some tests added. Okay, I yeah, know it's not actually testing anything. It's just running and checking that it does not have any error. To check if the result produced uh, produce are correct, add your own test below the include function using the add test. Okay, so you need to add test as in proper testing functionalities yourself. Uh, which we'll not be doing because this is not a 10 hours marathon stream. So again, to recap, what we're doing here is we're trying to see if we can up the project from jump 19 to jump 20 without breaking anything. If we can, that's wonderful. Uh, we'll just add this commit and then we move on to uh, jump 21 and then see is anything breaking, do we have warnings to fix and so on. So in any case, as we mentioned, uh, the things we need to no, the things we need to change is not the test and not the notebooks, but the scripts. And the scripts are where everything is happening. And these will be generated afterwards. So these are the special syntax with syntax generating the notebooks and the test files. And sh okay, yeah, the semicolons here is to avoid printing things twice in the notebooks, I guess. Uh, how are test running? Oh, we're using some deprecated stuff. 
which is dangerous because this means um, this means we are running a version now and since we're not committing to any version if it's uh, dataframes.jl is upgrading and saying okay now we've warned you now this is breaking then we will have a breaking change without noticing it because we didn't commit to any version so I guess we should the first thing to do would be to commit to a given version of uh, data frames here it will be interesting and then uh, fix the warnings to be sure that we have a, a syntax that's going to last longer alright other than that it no error this is fairly robust so now it's a uh, ecos okay so now we're running some new tests optimization concepts I didn't see this one micro script what is an optimization concept benders conic programming so it might be why the ecos solver was used it's a conic programming solver and integer programming okay this is this I hope will not break because I'm fairly ignorant about uh, conic programming so if something breaks I can just naively fix the warnings that are given to me but I cannot do more than that uh, one thing we might want to do in some cases is also add um, a random seed to produce the same random values every time now we would want to do that to avoid generating a new notebook every time because with this if we're not committing to a given random seed every time you run this script you get a different value which is fine because it's just random data but at the same time we would like the things not to be modified and recommitted every time we just run the script we just want to add some commits and add some changes when we do actually change the source size can model view both problems okay so that's okay the conic problem doesn't seem too hard also consider pushing all the random values into a vector and keeping that vector random seeds can change with hardware that's very true um yes no you you're right um but wait i think some some random seeds are hardware independent i think uh, I'm not sure Mercent Twister is uh, the, the one from random I'm not sure uh, this one is oh wait no. I was mumbling about things but then I realized we have some some actual errors in the test okay so what was the last one passing optimization concept is fine and then we have an error in the run test 38 okay Result index of attribute my variable primal out of bound. There are currently zero solutions in the model. Okay, so this is a fairly complex error to say we're trying to get information out of the model which has not been solved. It means, uh, yeah, we probably did some things in the wrong order. So 38 in run test. Uh, micro test. Modeling examples. So it might be in the uh, Sudoku one. Uh, do we? Where is our junior session here? Oops. Include uh, test modeling. Like that. So is it where the error was? At the same time, I will check what is actually in this uh, modeling Sudoku. Modeling Sudoku. Okay, it's so, uh, yeah, it's using integer optimization for a Sudoku solver. Constraint. Oh wow, formatting is a bit harsh here. Yeah. One thing we could do on the scripts is also run Julia formatter to get something a bit more uniform. 
But again, we're not gonna do that here. Oh yeah, because this is a bit out of scope for now, and this requires uh, this requires a bit more work. Oh, yeah, thanks a lot in the chat, Brain RPG. Yep. Uh, but yeah, for now, again, I'm just gonna modify very tiny things. Oh no, again, yeah, I should not modify this. This is harder than me. Um, I should not be modifying this because this is generated files. Uh, but yeah, so it might be also why we have some strange spaces at some point. Uh, okay, so include test modeling Sudoku is working. Uh, so it means it was not that. So that was not the problem. Let's see if test run test. Okay, so it's in this test set, but it was not. Uh, this was not the problem. So it's here. Let's see where exactly is the stack trace arriving. Ah, modeling power systems here, okay. Oops, a bit too big. Yes. Okay. Here. Sta status you get equal termination status. Okay, we so we do optimize Uh, we do optimize our model. Oh, yeah, I think accessing either accessing the value or access of a variable or accessing the objective va the value is undefined um, or frozen error if you don't actually have uh, if you don't actually have a value here, uh, which makes sense. If you haven't solved your problem, you don't get a value out of your variable. Um, same thing, you don't get an objective value. Or if your model is infeasible, or if it's nearly solved, or if it's stalled, or if it's some special status that's not optimized completely with an optimal solution, then all these things, so objective value and value of variables, are ill defined. So that's why uh, it's throwing an error. Um, and this is for variable primal so it thinks it's wh we're accessing a variable that's not we're accessing the, the value of the optimal solution for a variable when the termination status is not optimal so i think the behavior before was uh, none so n-a-n for not a number in that case but it might have changed uh, so this is in we're in the file uh, test modeling power systems here. So this means this is something to modify in uh, the source file script. Uh, so it's modeling power systems. Well, actually, we should maybe look at it in the note in the notebook to see a pretty format of it and also play a bit with it if it works. Uh, in this cell we create function solved which solves the equity dispatch okay. So was it this one? Yes it was here. Okay. Oh sorry. Um so this should maybe check here if the status. Oh no! It, wait, it was not this one. It was another one where the status was first computed. Yes, here. I think. Uh, which function was that? Solve U C. Yes. And that's. 
Yes, that's this one. So you need commit. So that's a unit commitment problem, uh, with which is fairly standard in in power systems. And so here, the only thing we want to modify is get the status. If the status is optimal, then return that as usual. Otherwise, return something something that makes sense. So I guess this will be the status and then the ze zeros with the size of G um, zero here I guess zero everywhere yeah that, that should do it alright um, so that would be you know, no no ah, that was here so you see so this is our our cell. I'm just checking if we're solving the thing several times, but it doesn't seem to be so. Let's check uh, the notebooks for that. Do we have yes? So not introduction. It was in modeling. Yes modeling and then power systems all right I hope everyone can see the screen with power systems without too much trouble all right so what do we have power systems okay so we have it seems that we have only one example of uh, dispatch or commitment problem. So this is rerunning everything. Um, so solve the economic dispatch. That should be fine. So this one was not area or anything. And then that was the second problem, so the unit commitment, which was yielding errors. So this one should be fine. Oh, it's still a uh, pre-compiling jump. So for there we also have lots of training white spaces. But again, I'm going to resist my urge to reformat everything because this is these are generated files why not when it, it doesn't bring anything to modify them all right um, I don't know why it's taking quite a bit here but in any case the thing to modify would be so that should stay roughly the same I hope it's already in place Uh, there should be a coma here and that's something we can modify because this is not really pretty um, let's get back to our terminal while we wait for that to finish all right uh, this is scripts modeling power systems uh, elapsed elapsed time then space and space here right that was really not a major contribution but it's better than nothing but to start somewhere so is this finished okay cool uh, yes so that was launched already did, did I launch that yes perfect total cost okay so this is working then this one I don't remember what this one was doing normally oh yeah printing the results okay modifying the jump model in place so that was the one with a uh, not pretty not that pretty printing
Uh, okay, perfect, that's working. And then the mount, so that's still formatting the results to analyze what's going on. Okay, transmissible in transmission feasible solution. Okay, unit commitment, that's what's of interest to us. This one is always the one erroring. So it should still error. Okay, not here. Ah, okay, no, that's actually, so it was calling it here once, and now it's calling it here. Yes, perfect. And yeah, because what was done is checking here if the status is optimal or not. Oh, the formatting is not really pretty either. We'll change that in the source afterwards. So if status is optimal, do this. Otherwise, otherwise print that. Um, but the problem is we are requesting the values before. Uh, so the check should actually happen here. So we'll try to fix it here. Um, we, we won't commit that. If it works, we will actually change the, the, the actual source file. So if status is my optimal, yes, optimal, oops. Uh, so this doesn't change. Um, now we'll actually, so this is the happy path, we'll put it last, so that's the normal case. And if different from, from optimal then, so we'll return the same uh, shape, meaning the same values, to avoid type instability, just as good practice. Um, but here we need zeros of length that so that's gonna be zero wf minus zero so these values won't actually make sense we could also use uh, we could also use nans I guess to re keep the convention of before of uh, former jump versions so here that was you and that could actually be so if we're not optimal it means we're either unbounded or infeasible I think this is always this cannot be unbounded um, so it means we're infeasible and we're trying to minimize a cost I think um, what's the objective minimize a cost so it means the convention for something that's infeasible when you try to minimize is to have an objective at plus infinity. So that will be it for now. Yes, should work like that. Still works, all good. And now if we relaunch this, nope, still out of bound. Um, um, are we still computing a value? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Now we have to return that. We are not return. We're not doing anything. So it means we still reach the last line here. All right, invisible. Perfect. So it's just printing invisible for one case. Great. Um, I think we'll take a break for now. I need to get some water. I'm a bit dehydrated. But yeah, afterwards we'll keep going. So fix this one and then keep going on the other test and see if we have some other things to fix, at least for germ 020. Right, so we are back. Um, so let's continue on this. We now have the function fixed and the rest of the notebook is working fine. So what I do is just uh, copy the whole function.
function or I could just copy the last lines actually this is the only thing I actually modified so status check the status first and then return something according to uh, what, what the status is so getting back to my terminal I had this open somewhere yes here uh, that's here here load file um, So that was this function, yes. All right. What? Here, like then. Okay. Uh, this should be fine now. And that was in the script. And we now need to uh, regenerate it. All right. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah. It sh yeah. Okay, we're back online. Finally, sorry about that. So, um, yeah, internet jumpy connection. Of course, it has to happen anytime you stream. I think that's what Murphy was saying. So we are back to it. Uh, we now have something working on the so on the notebook. Which mean we, which means we, we could uh, add it to the script, and means now we can get back to the initial module, so jump tutorials, and we can weave the file. Uh, so weave file, and then we give a path, which is a script modeling. So it means that's neat here because we don't need to modify anything except the file that we actually uh, worked on, which was power systems. So the rest will not be modified or anything. Oh. Uh, oops, we do need a file path and something else. What is it? Folder file, okay. Uh, so folder is this, yeah, this, and file is that. Mm. No such file directory. Project Julius source. Uh, Ah, okay, we we can omit the script part. Warning has been updated. No method matching notebook. Well, that's not great. Weaving power system. String string int string. Close the string. Out path timeout. Oh, hmm. Okay, so this means the, the notebook um, method has been modified since the last use. We'll see we, if we have uh, user weave. If we have other methods for this. Uh, notebook. No, we have just one. Okay, so it means the source is going in positional argument and all the rest is keyword arguments. Okay, so we just copy this here and we'll so this we don't need anymore. So that was so the problem is now in the source of jump tutorials here. Oh, sorry, I didn't have a chat. If you have questions in the chat, don't hesitate. Um, I didn't have it on, so I'm not sure if it cut between the different cuts of the stream or not. Um, if it did, sorry. All right, so everything is working except this part here. All right, string. So, so that's the source path. Out path is. So that was out path. Timeout must be minus one. 
and allow error is this one. The rest we just forget. And this should be good now. So let's retry. No if all right, we need to reload that because we changed the source. Uh, import jump tutorials. So compilation is still broken for some reason. And then we with this. Okay, we don't get the error directly. It's good news. Has been updated, okay. No, no. What do you want? MB convert. File. Okay, I'm not sure what kind of error we're getting now. No such kernel named Julia 1.4. Okay. Um, one thing? Really? Uh, where are the kernels located? I'm not sure if we have some uh, some Jupyter experts in the chat. Um, config Jupyter. Nope. Um, Jupyter. Yep. And and the config. Uh, in lab user setting settings no not that no so not user settings workspaces lab what's that So we, uh, what, what I'm looking for now is a way to add G1.4, which doesn't seem to be there. And apparently, this um, apparently this uh, we well weave is looking for a convention of you need to call uh, G1.4 1.4. Uh, where am I? Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I? Yes. No, I don't have one point three. Curiously, um, I thought I did add. So I'm now in the uh, one point four, and I did add iJulia. All ah, right, but I think I need to activate it. So. And this will download anything we need from iJudia. Okay, I did add the package, but I did not activate it, and so uh, Julia was not registered with uh, Jupyter yet. So if I now do Julia dot uh, notebook, this will now launch a notebook with Julia 1.4, I think. And yes, I'm I'm getting exactly that with anything I need. All right. Uh, yeah, let's quit that for now. So if I now restart it, I might have no, no such kernel named G1.4. I guess I might have to restart this again. Yes, oh, no, that was import jump tutorials. And we fine. Okay. All right. No kernel name G1.4. That's fairly unfortunate again. Hmm. Uh, well, if I now, if I quit that and I restart it. Uh, 
uh, do I now have Julia 1.4 in the new, if I do a new notebook? Still not, that's, that's odd. Okay, um, how do I fix that? Let's open Julia globally. In my status, I still have iJulia. Import iJulia. I think this should work somehow. Or do I need to create a new one? So if I'm now here, what's the version? I guess it will be um, 1.3. In that case, uh, where do I find my kernels? No, still not Jupyter here. Uh, uh, local, I think. Jupiter. Uh, notebook secret. I'm not sure I should show notebook secret. Definitely not. Uh, NVX kernels. All right. Uh, I guess I should just copy. It's weird that it's not registering it anymore. I think it did for a G1.3. Um, oh, uh, thanks, Kelatour. Um, so, this is not working for a still a very mysterious reason. What I could do is just copy kernels 1.3 to kernels 1.4, Julia 1.4, and and modify oops, manually uh, the entries. All right, so we still. Need Julia 1.4.0, I think. 1.4. Start of by yes, yes. Um, uh, where is Julia? It's in this one. So I copied up to the SRC. Yes. I'm really not sure that's the way to do it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's not the way to do it. Uh, but let's see. At least we can keep moving. That's what's important. All right, uh, let's kill this one. What was that again? All right, uh, here we are. So we'll kill it again. Restart. Import. Yep. No, not a Julia. Uh, We want uh, jump tutorials. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see if we can make it work. All right. Fingers crossed. If it doesn't work, uh, I think we can keep it for later because this is. Not essential, I'm basically just looking around trying to find a solution. It's not fairly interesting. Uh, the biggest thing might be to just 
get get the notebooks working, uh, the scripts working, sorry, and then we'll update everything afterwards. But it doesn't seem to be erroring, so I was maybe a bit pessimistic. In any way, uh, the script itself is fixed, so we can keep the script as is and and keep going with the rest of it, I guess. The other thing we can do, since uh, the initial point that was uh, bringing us down this rabbit hole was uh, test fading, so what we can do for now might be to just fix the test by just copying what we did in the script file. And yeah, actually, if this is not working, we might just do that. I'm gonna close some tabs that I'm not using anymore. All right, it, it worked. That's that's wonderful. Uh, now let's see what it did. What do we have in status that's modified? So we now modified manifest in project. Okay, uh, what's modified in project? We didn't. Um, oh yeah, we added compat test. Okay, yeah, that was the early fixing. Maybe we should do one commit with the project and manifest first. Just get that out and get that out of the way. And saying we have this, and we just modified versions. Commit. Um, frozen versions for critical um, packages okay so next uh, I, th I think we should just ignore all these since so we're generating notebook checkpoints yeah we'll just get this out of the way by adding it to the git ignore so any so any of this Do I need that? I'm not sure. We'll see. Yes, perfect. It ignored it. Okay. Uh, I guess I can just append because we didn't do anything interesting. Uh, amend. Yes, modified. All right, accept. Okay, uh, what's next? So we, I think the biggest thing is we fixed jump tutorials for now. Uh, sorry, see, jump tutorials. So that was fixing the notebook function which was not respecting the convention. So that would be one commit by itself. Uh, uh, fix notebook. Um, signature to keyword args okay and then the other big thing we did was script and uh, script modeling power system and this one was fairly big it was fixing the actual thing uh, fixing um, Fixing status verification in unit commitment. Okay. Uh, and we modified, uh, did we modify test modeling Sudoku? Modeling Sudoku. Ah, right. We did some formatting that we should not have done here. And we did modify test modeling power systems. Uh, yeah, we did modify this because it was generated by the source, that's perfect. Good. Uh, again, I'm not sure, I'm really not sure we should have this committed, uh, but we kind of need it for a test, I think. Uh, okay. Um, and so fix test uh, power systems. I think this would be one big uh, 
piece of work on this repo will be not touching and not committing anymore on any of the on yeah any of the generated files so not committing tests not committing notebooks that will be uh, quite interesting to have and it will reduce the number of commit and the amount of work in each commit um, all right so the thing that brought us here again was trying to run the test so let's try to do that again now that things have been fixed um, yeah and in the meantime if you have questions in the chat or anything on some things we did I uh, don't hesitate or if it's going too slow too fast if I'm speaking too much or not enough because I have no idea what I'm doing Now this was just the basics, so we already run this. this. This would have been worrying if we had broken any of the other things without touching them. That would have been quite some trouble. Okay, that was still fi that was fine already before, so it's still fine now. We should maybe have a um, print end before this and that. I don't know. This this looks very ugly. Not only the bros, but very ugly to have this like that plus the enum going down directly here. But well. wondering what I was seeing. Okay, this is an optimization problem that uh, that was presenting at uh, Julia Khan and Jamdev, I think, of uh, finding the minimum number of nationalities to get access to all countries, all possible countries, and so you have a solution of which passports to get. Uh, warning, uh, that's interesting. Set coefficient is deprecated. Use set normalized coefficient instead. So this will be one thing to fix in one of the notebooks uh, working with data files yes perfect using germ working 61 okay so we will fix this in the source again so the all the deprecations we're seeing are basically working with data files so this also is a hint that we should commit the version of the dependencies we have related to data so it will be here data frames which is the biggest one giving us warnings and also apparently uh, another one which I don't know it, this might be jump I'm not sure that's passing printing things uh, tests seem to be happy yes optimization concepts are happy wonderful So in the meantime, while the tests are running, maybe I can... Uh, we didn't have anything... Yes, I think we can just get reset the rest of it. Uh, not... no. We can add... Uh, get add we can add this notebook because we regenerated it. Commit. Um, fixing our system notebook. And then the rest of it, which is actually just this file that we uh, naively modify without needing it or being able to modify it alone, this one will just reset it. Okay, now we have a clean workspace. Uh, 
I actually push all this work jump to z and jump zero twenty. Okay, we seem to be doing great for now. Uh, and we said that we wanted to fix the warnings in the data part. Maybe this should be. This is just warning, so maybe we should keep it for another PR, so another branch, and keep this one so the jump 020 just for fixing things, really fixing things for jump 020, which is actually what we did with the power system part. Alright. I'm not sure how good the sound is on your side. Uh, I have no idea. So if this is too loud, not loud enough, just let me know in the chat. All right. I'm not sure how expensive. Oh, I'm not sure how expensive um, the optimization problems are. The ones we're solving. They should be just toy problems, but. In some cases, toy, toy problems for some classes of problems are already very complex. Uh, like for some integer problems with some very weird structure, you can you can pay a heavy price by trying to solve them. Some combinatorial problems, uh, even convex problems, can be very memory hungry. So, yeah, in some cases, you might get stuck on a standard laptop like the one I have, especially while streaming at the same time and recording a video. Um, so everything seems to be more or less fine. One thing I could do in the meantime, nothing has been... okay. Um, so I'll add branch um, warning data and this will be our branch for fixing all the warnings on the working with data part. What is all this? SVG, okay, we really don't need to print. Ah, okay, it's, it's it shouldn't be printed for sure. But uh, what is it? What it is, sorry, is uh, the graph represented in a descriptive DSL for SVGs or for, graf uh, for graphics. So in the notebooks, these will appear as plots, not as text like that. Okay, perfect. We have the test passing. So this is this is great. Uh, this means the jump twenty is ready to will be ready to um, to be merged. What we can do in the meantime is uh, tackle the warning data. Warning. Yeah, I think I will do all the PRs at the same time. Uh, the jump folks might not like me for that. Sorry. Um, but I don't think this would bring any value to do this now. So, so uh, warning data will now tackle all the first part of... No, not this one. I don't use any other plotting packages enough to be uh, helping a lot on this. But all these warnings are all in the working with data section. And all these uh, we can actually um, fix ourselves. So, um, so that would be scripts and uh, work using jump and working with data. Yeah, I think that this one, yes. Uh, data frames. I think this is already added. Uh, so what's the status and what is the version of data frames that's being used? 020, okay. First thing is we'll commit that to our project file. Okay. Um, also, this would definitely be a version bump. Anyway, versions are not that much of a big deal of a yeah of a deal here, because uh, nobody depends on Jump tutorials. It's a final product. It's an application. Let's say it's not a library. People will not import Jump tutorials to do something with it. 
Uh, so dev star frame and then we'll add I don't know how this is sorted the frame equal to this version 0 20 all right so we're now committing uh, to the current version I don't think we'll need this uh, this should be removed at some point I think what is a data frame okay so this is oh yeah this should also maybe be committed 06 I don't know I don't think this these are moving that much Zero 06 but yeah anyway I think it's better to be safe than sorry so we'll add anything we need here alright that's why there is an excel file okay this is um this is to show how to work with excel files for doing optimization because lots of people on the applied side might be giving you excel files instead of more standard formats uh yeah csv is definitely one we want to commit to because it's seeing sometimes some uh quite breaking changes so it's zero six not that often these days because it, it's been experimented a lot with and in the end I think it's reaching more or less a more stable API now but still you never know okay so so we're basically showing how to import data from Excel CSV uh, txt oh delimited file okay um, okay showing the size Okay, so what I will want is getting when is the warning happening. For that, I will just uh, get here and include my script. No, where am I? Um, so I use semicolon here to know where I am. Ah, I'm in source, okay. So include. So what I. What I want to include is one level higher, and then script, and then uh, we were in using jump, yes, and working with data files. Compat not listed in depths or ex. Oh, I think yes. Oh, it's, mm, it's the frames. Okay, that's the danger of manually editing things. That would be better. Okay, perfect. So it's curiously re adding things. We should maybe not do that, but, anyways, it's not that much of a deal. It's because uh, we, the script itself is re adding the packages just in case. I guess it's for people to understand that to load Excel files, you need this. Ta da! Huh. Um, all right, I see. So the problem here is that it's not using the current path. So instead, it's. Um, it's not using the current path, it's using the direct path. So it depends on of where we are. It means if I now change the directory, I just test my hypothesis here. That if I go to scripts, uh, using jump, and I have this, if I now re-include the file, this will now work. So this means it depends on where you call the script from and that's not something we would want. So instead, uh, I guess we will use the current path here. Um, current here. Equal, and we have a magic thing for that, which is uh, the dear macro, which is where the file is located. Um, and then 
Korean deer and that uh, deer will be a joint path of this and um, data and this year will be um, join path of that idea and this thing okay uh, same thing for the CSV join path of um, that idea and Star Wars. We have a Star Wars fight. I didn't know that. Oh. So we'll do the same with um, cereal. I guess this is uh, the diet problem. It's fairly well known. I feel like there should be a way to automate that, but I I don't see exactly how join path and then so this is closing here, not there. Okay, yeah, again. It's overriding this with uh, copy calls equal true. And this is a fairly broad introduction because this is showing some stuff that's not really related to gem days. So it's great. It's working with data for preparing a problem to be solved by jump or equivalent systems. So I hope we're not loading any more data there. No, great. So it should now more or less be working. Oh, that was. So I'll see if it's working again now, if it's still working, sorry. And then I will change the directory to anywhere else where it was breaking before and see if it's now working. And finally, I'll also regenerate the file to verify that it's also still working for the... No. Is that a valid file? Okay. Script using jump. Is it not? Um, if I go to script, no. Script using jump data. Siri. Oh, there's no serial.csv. I did something that I shouldn't have done, I guess. Serial.csv yeah, here. Uh, oh, it's not text, yes. Now this should be working. No. Oh, I also did that somewhere else. TXD. Uh, now okay working so now again I'll go back to another folder because it was failing before if you were not in the same folder as the file we have a fix of adding the current directory which is the directory of um, uh, of a file and not the directory of a Julia session this should now be working I hope I'll check the specification of Dear, spin to a string with absolute path of a directory of a file containing the micro call. Return the current working directory. If run from the REPL, okay. So I hope this works. Oh no, um, we went up by one uh, folder, so it's now in this. No. Data. Oh, that. 
or is this an old passport problem? We skipped that somehow. Passport. Right. So this one is also a joint path of the year and that. Okay. I don't know how and why we... Oh yeah, we didn't go maybe to the complete file. Yes, but okay, there's no more file, so this should now be fine. Uh, let's get back to here, and this should now be working. Yeah, perfect. Okay, all good. So we we didn't erase a warning, but we make we made the script more convenient to work with from a different session, which might or the session in a different folder, which might be practical in lots of cases. Now we'll actually tackle this these warnings that we're seeing. Um, so these include um, okay L types is the precate use L type okay that's that should do it line a hundred and two uh, let's yeah. we need that script and a hundred and two all right I will just basically L type. Uh, we'll I don't know if we have it in different places. No, it doesn't seem so. So let's just try to check. Corres correspond corresponding uh, corresponding, I guess. Corresponding data types obtained using the L type function over. Uh, Broadcasted, uh, broadcast, broadcasted. I. It feels weird, but yeah, broadcasted. I think. Because I think that's at least how Julia is saying it. No. Phrase that. Broadcast. That. Broad. Broadcasted. Okay, so it, I guess it's a word. I was not sure. English. Broadcasted add type function. Okay, so this is now fixed. Next is get index data frame in column is deprecated. Use uh, exclamation mark instead. So that's one 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 five and set index. In the okay, that's another one. One 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 five. Uh, okay, we're not far. Access a column, so this and that. Okay, so that was an easy fix. And then the last warning is implicit broadcasting in set index is deprecated. Use df ro equal ref v broadcasting assignment to change a column in place. Okay, and this is. A hundred and thirty-seven. Uh, okay. And this was only there. No, one four five. Also. In the future, column names in source and targets will have to match. Oh, and they don't. Uh, so I guess for that we'll have to we'll have to see what the Excel names are because uh, they don't seem to match for now. Um, yeah, well I think we'll do that now because otherwise we'll just forget it. this I will need to go back to the uh, where am I I'm in script already
creep there. Uh, do I have that? Wait, how come I don't have a data folder? Split using jump. Data. Okay, I think I'm in. Um, no, yeah, I need to be in um, using jump. Sorry. Okay. And now this should work. Uh, uh, refusing it, and then okay. okay now, now we have it. Have it. Uh, okay, okay, and we, we do, do have, have names, names, so it means um, yeah. I'm, I'm not, not sure there's an ideal solution for that. So the warning again was. Oh, uh, 145. Here, we are setting a subset of a of a Excel data frame to a, another data frame of matching size. Uh, but this will be deprecated because the names are not the same. So it means we should give the same names of the first columns. I'm not sure what's the syntax to that. So it will be all the date and region. Uh, let's see. Oh no, it's line one, two and column six, seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Unit cost and total. Uh, what what are the constructors for that frame? Um, okay, you can give it this and then the names. So if I go back to the way it was constructed here, I will give it the names, which are um, unit cost and total. Let's copy that. So unit cost will be a symbol out of a string. And total will be just a symbol we can express like that. I think. Yes. Okay. So we now have a way to construct properly our data frames. It means we can just test if it works. Equal, and we reuse the same expression. Okay, and now it works. So it means we can replace uh, this with that to get something up to date. Perfect. And the rest of it was not issuing any warning, I think. We include the thing. We should not. Yes, yes no warning. warning. Perfect. All right, so we fixed that. So if we check status, uh, we uh, yeah, we committed some things in the project to fix some versions of our dependencies to avoid breaking things without knowing it, and we also modified uh, the scripts. What we need to do now is just as we did before. Um, include uh, import jump tutorials and generate the notebook and the test file out of uh, working with that file. Jump tutorials. So I'm not sure this will work. Maybe it will be the same problem as notebook uh, with a uh, sorry notebook signature syntax. Um, so the folder is now using jump 
and the file is uh, working with the other file. So just copy that. Okay. Okay, that's fine. The warning makes sense. And now let's hope all is good. Especially, I hope I won't get any error on the Python part because this can just be forgotten. Then, I mean, we can't introspect anything. We can't see what's what's going on. shape and um, the next step will be to bump from jump 020 to 021 where I think we will get some more deprecation warnings uh, it would make sense uh, like some pieces of the syntax have been removed or modified so it's fairly minor so we'll be fairly quick to modify it but it still has to be to be done but it, it's not a very high difficulty part. It's mostly following warnings, fixing them, just like we did for for this. Yeah, of course. The longest part is generating Python, well, Jupyter notebooks, because so they're fairly heavy documents. They require running a server, which is running now, I think, to build them. Um, so uh, in the meantime, I think I can start adding and committing things. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's get back to the main part uh the project so the my favorite project yes that we want very much um i'll try to keep formatting consistent so that i don't know if there's a pkg comment to reformat the project tamil because it does it but it does it on specific operations so i want to run i just run this now to reformat the project tunnel and weirdly enough the manifest was also updated I didn't think this would happen okay um, um, this version for versions for uh, Okay. No. Ah. Um. Okay. This is not great. I committed everything. Uh. That was one thing I was not supposed to do. Okay. On the good note, the. Um, okay. <laughs> on the good note, the the conversion went well. On the bad note, I just committed everything in one commit, which is not something I wanted to do, but yeah, anyway. Fork one in the Oops. Again, sorry for the maintainers who are going to have these, these pull requests a bit too big and a bit not that atomic. Um, so the last thing to do to be sure everything is going all right is running the test now with a new test file and everything should be working and even better everything should be working without any error or warning this time we didn't have errors but we did have some warnings okay this one is still there we still don't know what exactly it is uh yeah let the test run 
in the meantime, um, what else did we have to do? Was well, there something to modify the really? Jump tutorials, part by new focus, that's great. So the jump documentation, oh yeah, I'll update that to 0 0.20. Um, I'm not sure what's the... Um, oh yeah, this is fixing jump repo. No, I'm not sure we want that maintained. Yeah, I'm not sure we want to point to the older notebook server, but well, that's not my decision to make. Um, yeah, this. I want to see where the documentation now lives. Uh, okay, yeah, we don't need that. Um, stable. Yeah, I think we want sta we want to point to stable instead of pointing to a nineteen specifically. Um, maybe we we'll point to twenty for now because we are, after all, just bringing this branch up to date with uh, twenty, and that commit should not be done on the current branch, which is just for data, but it should be done on the germ zero twenty branch. All right, we don't have any errors for now. Good. So in the meantime, I go back to Cows. Oops. So this was uh, Jump 020. And I modified the ring here. And to update the URL. Great. Mm. So we don't have any more reference to jump 19, I think, that's great. Okay, it was just a very minor change. Back to warning data, I'm going to merge jump 020 in, in, into it uh, to keep it up to date. I'm not sure it's the best way to do it, uh, but well, it, it's fine enough, I guess. Um, Alright, how are the tests doing? Pretty great for now, we don't have any errors and we don't have any warning. Ah, spoke too fast. <coughs> Problem modification. Set coefficient is deprecated. Use set normalized coefficient instead. Okay. I guess we can do this in this branch. Um, so it's in Problem modification 53. Uh, so scripts user jump Problem modification uh, it's not going to be 53 in this one. So what I do is just uh, run the script and see where I get the warning in this one. Because the script part has more lines because it has all the comments and so on. Again. Oh, load error. Unable to fix y to 2 because it has existing variable bounds. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Um, just to be sure, we are still on 20. I'm not sure it was an error with 20. Wait, oh yeah. Okay. So the script is not up to date for 20. It's, it's surprising that it 
that the rest of it works. Uh, I don't really get why and how. So we'll just um, so we'll fix this one. So I it's surprising that the tests don't reflect uh, this this error. Very well. Mm, so this is in Prime Modification 49. Okay. In the meantime, our tests are still doing great. Yeah, that's on the plotting part, so we need to touch that. Scripts, uh, using jump, and Prime Modification. And that was 40. Yes. Wait, uh, where was the error? Oh, was it here? Oh, great. Ah, here. 49. Sorry. So 49, fix Y2. Um, so we can't fix Y2. Okay, this is supposed to throw an error. Okay. Um, yeah, that's. I'm not sure we should leave it like that. Okay. Should this be that to throw an error? Um, uh, the, the big thing is that it continue after the error. Or ju does it just stop and not run the rest of the of the script? So it's in then maybe there should be a test for us. Oh, jump tutorials passed. That's great news. And we don't have the other warnings anymore. The only one we had was the one we're currently fixing about centralized coefficient. Great. Let's close that. Yeah, I want to know if things keep working after here. Some great debugging skills here, as you notice. Um, no, it stops after. Yes. <coughs> One possibility would be to use tests instead and test rows. Um, it's really not great that the notebook is working. Well, everything will be working except for this one. I guess that's why tangle equals false. Um, there was something was did I yes. There was something about tangle on the documentation of uh, yes here notes tangle. We use the tangle feature of we to generate files for testing. So it's a code from the file. Okay, up to now we're fine. To throw some example of what not to do, enhance some code blocks and throw errors on purpose. Yes, these blocks can cause tests to fail when we run the entire tutorial, hence we are skipped from Tangle. Okay, so it's it's normal that the script is not running. Uh, I'll take that as granted. Um, so I guess we can. Uh, yeah, it means we can continue after. Mm. So we were here, and what we want to do is suppress the one that was in the test that just closed. Wonderful. Um. I guess I just copy everything here. So this one is the one for an error. Yes. Uh, 
and fix is fixed. Okay, all is doing great. Delete model X will delete variable X from the model. Okay, and then is value will be false because it's been deleted. Uh, okay, this is restarting model from scratch. It would be much easier if I knew exactly where the warning was. But I don't because I closed the window. Oh! Set coefficient is deprecated. Use set normalized coefficient instead. So what is this? Set normalized coefficient. Set the coefficient of variable in the constraint, constraint to value. Wait, what? Note that prior to this step, Jim would aggregate multiple terms containing the same variable. Okay. Uh, so it was exactly here. And what we wanted, what we want is this one instead, with exactly the same syntax. Constraint variable value. Constraint variable value. Okay, correct. And we'll see just if we don't have any more coefficients. Ah. Sets here. Set normalized coefficients. Okay. Great. Um, so again, we modified the script, and we'll just um, do the same process as before, and import jump tutorials and build the test and the um, um, notebook from that. We find so it's using jump and um, problem notification. Maybe this should be an info instead of a warning because this is really supposed to happen. So we should not be warned about, about this as if we had some deprecation or anything like that. So it seems to be generating okay. was the biggest thing for the test, so we now have test passing with uh, 0 0.20 and I think we'll have a bit more work to do for 0 0.21 but we might stop before, it's, it's been what, uh, an hour and a half? Two hours? Uh, two hours and a half, okay. Uh, so I guess I'll just see if my tests are passing, uh, push everything and stop there. So, um, so I run the test here. And here I'm just using test. Include, I just include the test file directly just to see if I have an error. Uh, I mean, source, so I just go up test and it was um, using jump and problem modification so normally there should be no error because the only error we had was a planned error of fixing a variable that you're not supposed to fix
So here we have a test starting to run, and here we have the individual test file for the, for the script we modified. Okay, it seems to be all working correctly. Um, so I guess waiting for yeah, I can cut, I can shut down the server. Um, so we generated a uh, notebook test and so on. I guess I can just commit all of them at once. Um, so this will be um, update jump syntax text for uh, coefficient in constraints normalized coefficient. Yes. One in the All right. So with that, we also already have quite a bit of cleanup done. And yeah, I think we'll stop afterwards. We won't go through the going from 020 to 021, at least not for now, maybe in another stream. Um, yeah. And yeah, the big thing after that will be getting the PR merged. Uh, uh, this is the running version. But yeah, again, this is more bookkeeping and this will not be the most interesting part, I think. And But the big thing, the, the thing we're going to be avoiding the bike chain a lot on is um, removing the test and notebooks from the committed part of the project. Just like we should not commit the manifest anymore and just keep it apart. Um, so this will be the biggest thing for this repo, I guess. Just switching from having everything in the repo to having the generated files generated somewhere as you wish and not, not inside. Um, yeah, right, the, the IP up part was also the best thing, that's great, fantastic. So we're now in optimization concepts, uh, I think this is part, uh, I think it starts with introduction using jump, optimization concepts, and then modeling. Uh, and modeling is, uh, oh yeah, lots of things, okay. Oh yeah, modeling is all the applied parts, I think. Yes, yeah, so we're now in the, uh, this is the one we, the one we fixed before, um, the power system part. So we're going power system, oh, okay, I know. The k -row part is problem on graph, because uh, graph plot, the main package used to plot graphs from light graph is uh, using, um, what is it again? Uh, Compose, which uses either k -row or anything like that. And these are like the sub libraries used to uh, produce the graphical representation of the graph. But yeah, I had forgotten that there was uh, this here. Maybe there should be a commit on light graph 1.0 because uh, 2.0 is coming soon. So maybe we'll add that to the project toggle. I mean script. And we the uh, 2.0 will be breaking compared to the 1.0, so if at some point it happens and we don't block the version, then uh, bad things will happen, like uh, the graph part will break all over. Uh, so here it means I'm going to add my graphs to uh, the to the committed things, and I just add that it has to be 1.0, nothing else. Uh, GDP. Okay, my tests are passing, that's fantastic. I just close that and I'm going to do up to be sure that my uh, project toml is formatted in a good way. Oops. And yes, now project manifest are modified. Mm. 
and uh, this will be a locking like a version. Um, uh, that's a bugger. I'm not sure this should be there. Uh, this should be in the other branch and the other PL we're gonna do. Yes. Yeah, too bad. So I'll revert it on the one in data and I'll add it here. Uh, I could cherry pick, I think, but I'm not an expert on that. Oh uh, no, we did. No. Forget it. We did all the version blocking on warning data. So we'll just keep it there. It's fine. Not like graph, uh, one data. All right, and yeah, that would be it, I think. Uh, so yeah, I guess I close the stream now. Thanks for watching, and if you have questions, just ping me in the Julia Slack. Uh, if you don't know how to find all the resources, you can reach out to most people. Uh, on communities, uh, so jlm.org slash communities, community, sorry, uh, singular. You have all the links to discourse, uh, Slack, and so on, which I use for informal chatting between uh, members of the Julia community. So if you want to get some help or more questions, either that or uh, you can also find me on, on Twitter with uh, logging the same as Twitch. Uh, Matt doesn't like this. Alright.